Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the latest edition of the Woke Bros. Of course, I'm your co-host, Big Waz, a.k.a. Wazzy Lambre. Nando Vila is off gallivanting on the streets of Madrid right now. And so we have a special guest in his stead. Uh, you've seen her on TYT. You've seen her on TikTok going viral like 30 million times already. Uh, a more perfect union. She's all over the place. Jessica Birdbank, what's popping? It's good to be on. It's good to be on, Waz. I'm I'm really happy to see you, although I'm very sad that you have left us on the West Coast. You moved to the country. Um, you live in North Carolina now. I'm just kidding. You don't you don't live in the country. Uh, but she she's moved, so she's no longer a West Coaster, but she still um made some time to come on with us, man. How's everything been with you? Yeah, I'm in the sticks now. This the sticks of Charlotte, North Carolina. It's good to be out <laughs> here. I love North Carolina. I miss LA. I miss the my friends in LA, but yeah, it's good to be back here. I love it. Um, and so today I wanted to have you on because TikTok has been all over the news recently. Um, they're hauling the freaking CEO <laughs> up to Capitol Hill and har haranguing the guy, <laughs> jer jerking his collar, if you will, a little bit. Um, it's obviously one of the most popular social media uh, platforms in this country. I don't know how popular it, how popular it is around the world, but it's huge here. Can you talk to when did you get on TikTok? How did you become such a dope TikToker? What, what's, what's your TikTok journey? Yeah, it is popular around the world. It's the most uh, popular online destination in the world, which is crazy. Wow. But for me, it was just like pandemic hit right after the Bernie campaign. During the Bernie campaign, I was staff in organizing. So like in person with people having meetings, knocking doors, all that stuff. And so when the pandemic hit, it was like whiplash. Like suddenly everybody's in their houses. Nobody's talking to anybody about, you know, important stuff. Uh, Bernie brought a lot of really important stuff to the forefront of politics in, in America. And so I got on TikTok. It was during March Madness two years ago. Wow. And, uh, so it's literally yeah, your two year anniversary. It is, and they're trying to get rid of it. It's did ridiculous. you did you buy a cake or something? Did you do anything to no. celebrate? <laughs> no, I just posted an, an angry rant about how they shouldn't ban it. That's okay. all I did. But I just got on. I made like a little skit about politics, about uh, how the monetary system works. And the first skit I posted, which was my second TikTok ever, ended up getting like 100,000 views. So I was like, this is easy. <laughs> it's not that easy, but <laughs> it was fun. It was like, this is my thing. I love this. And now they want to ban it. Now that my brain's like finally regularly producing serotonin, they're like, psych, we're going to take this away from all of you. So just so people know, um, I've actually hung out with Jess in real life. I've seen the sausage get made. Like I've actually seen her. <laughs> make a TikTok um, live and in person. I've seen her go live on TikTok. Like it, it's it's incredible to watch sort of TikTok happen. I'm still not on TikTok. I feel like I'm a, I'm a bit too washed to get up on there. Although I hear people find all <laughs> kinds of dope shit that I like, like rec restaurant recommendations and recipes and that kind of thing. To your mind, what, what differentiates TikTok from Instagram and Twitter, which you're active, pretty active on both. What differentiates TikTok to you? I think TikTok's algorithm is a little bit more powerful in how it drives the content. So even if you're following someone on TikTok, you're definitely not going to see all of their content. You're going to see a lot of content from people you've never seen it from before. And mm. so I think because this is an app that came out of ByteDance and because it came from people from overseas, they didn't have these American corporations saying, how do we make this friendly for advertisement from mm. the start? Mm. And I think that's really important because people saw the stuff that they really wanted to see. And it wasn't like there was this filter of stuff that's safe for work or safe for American corporations. There wasn't that baked in ability to like shadow ban. Um, and we really didn't see it. And so the type of content I see on TikTok is vastly different from what I see on, on Instagram, you know, the Facebook meta apps. And on Twitter, you have to have people know you to have a big following on those apps. You have to be doing something. Mm -hmm. But on TikTok, 
I had zero followers and I just posted and the algorithm took care of the rest. It's, show, it's giving everybody a chance to get seen and to get heard. You don't have to have any kind of platform for that. So I think that's why TikTok is very beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's democracy and social media and it's not dangerous it's, well, it's truly not what, what okay so what i do what i do think um tiktok has kind of been revolutionary about and you know facebook is uh, via um reels on instagram is trying to tap into is this idea that like we think we know what we want to curate for ourselves like for instance I'll follow the science Instagram page or I'll follow some great uh, modern philosopher because I want to I want to pretend that I am this sophisticated <laughs> cosmopolitan whatever type of You're dude. Not. <laughs> <laughs> not all the time. Um, I like to think of myself that way. But once I go on my explore page. Instagram's like, you don't like any of that shit. You, you like these big old booties. You like sneakers. You like looking at food. That's it. That's it. That's it. We know what you like. We know what you're most likely to share. We know what you're most likely to hover aboard, watch over and over again. And we're just going to give that to you. And I feel like that's what TikTok does. When you say you might not see the stuff that, um, from people that you follow, they're literally just sending automatically generating the things that they know that you want, even if you don't think so. Yeah. A thousand percent. Yeah. It's, it's, it's working on, um, your subconscious. And so I want you to sort of, um, foreground for the people, what the government, the Biden administration, what's their rhetoric, um as coming out of these hearings and just this whole idea of just like oh if it's gonna stay here uh the the ccp or whoever has to divest mm -hmm. and let an american company run the american arm yada 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 uh what to your mind what is their uh sort of you know reason for going this hard at TikTok? yeah there's been a lot of that let's keep in mind what happened in the weeks and maybe a couple months before we had this hearing, which by the way, when there are most new pieces of policy legislation being introduced, there's a time for public hearing. They did not do that for this restrict act for this mm -hmm. bill 686. That's shocking. What they did do, however, was make a really big deal about this evil balloon from China flying in our airspace, which by the way, that also happened under Trump. We didn't feel the yeah. need to disclose it to the American public then. Maybe the difference is people saw this one, but they talked about it in the news for quite some time. Then they also, after months, published articles with no new research or information and put them on the front pages of news websites where they're like, actually, on second thought, COVID definitely came from that lab in China and definitely <laughs> was in that market. So what are they doing? They're like evil balloon. COVID came from China. You should yeah. be afraid of China. But what's mm -hmm. going on in the world right now really is that Russia and China are brokering deals so that they can trade with Saudi Arabia uh, oil in the Chinese currency, not the U.S. dollar, which removes a lot of power the United States has in the international economy. So the United States has other reasons. If you care about international domination and our capital accumulation with the elite, which the elites and the Biden administration, absolutely they do. That's that's their game. They're like, we got to, you know, come up with something to make the people afraid of China. And this TikTok hearing has been a complete bust. So it's way bigger than TikTok. It's putting the power in the hands of the Secretary of Commerce to say any online app or any online activity, anything that uses the internet, it could be transactions, cloud storage space, if it isn't uh, some kind of foreign entity that we consider an enemy, they list out the, the usual suspects, right? Iran, China, <laughs> Cuba, uh, and they can just add more at their discretion. Basically, they say, if there's any interaction with any of those, you violate this thing. The, the Commerce Secretary can, at their discretion, say you can't use this app, you can't use anything from, from foreign adversaries of the United States. That's insane. That is a lot of power to give to one person to just, you know what, Americans can't use that on the internet, they can't use that on the internet. It is insane. It's way bigger than TikTok. So that's the Restrict Act, what it's really doing. So 
Well, look, I, I hear every single thing that you're saying. Um, I, I, I too, have noticed just the, the uptick in anti-China propaganda. Um, I think a lot of a lot of our at first I was like, how are we going to divest from China when like, you know, companies like Apple and Walmart and all of these companies are they just going to cut and run from China? It seems highly unlikely, like in order to spite China, we'd be hurting ourselves. That's what it's felt like. But, you know, if you do read uh, shit like Wall Street Journal and um, other business publications, a lot of people are pulling out of China. A lot of people are moving their manufacturing to places like Vietnam um, and other places. But just just as a counter argument, just um, as a thought exercise, right? Um, I don't know if you noticed the Twitter files came out, right? Mm, yeah. And what was exposed in the Twitter files is that our government works in concert with social media apps, this one being Twitter, but we know they do it with Facebook. We know Google cooperates with the CIA too. We know all of them are doing this, the tech giants, right? When they want to, they come on down and say, yo, you need to help us surveil. You need to shadow ban this person. You need to X, Y, and Z. This person is a combatant of the state, blah, 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 blah. They come out and do that. Like it's, this is not conspiracy theory or conjecture. Like this is facts. <laughs> this is, we know that this is happening. Um, and so from where I sit, honestly, Jess, I'm just like, look, as much as I would love for my friends, um, like you to be able to enjoy themselves and grow their following and make new friends from TikTok. We know that in China, like, okay, so I always explain to people like here, the money is up here and they give the dictates to our government, right? And so essentially our government is the middle manager of capital. You know, like right. Goldman Sachs literally tells Joe Biden, um, J.B. Morgan Chase, Black, BlackRock, whoever, like, no, this is how you need to conduct monetary policy. This is it. Mm -hmm. And then they go out and they fucking do it. Everybody walks in lockstep. In China, that relationship is inverted. Um, the CCP tells businesses they get to exist at the behest of the CCP. And if you follow that obvious order in logic, it stands to reason that the CCP can do with TikTok <laughs> what our government does with our social medias, right? Like does with American social media. And so it's not like they're going to take a roundabout way of explaining it. But like to me, I'm just like, this is what we do. Why would China not do the same thing, right? Like why wouldn't China surveil the daughter of some government guy via their TikTok to get state secrets? Like that seems obvious to me. <laughs> yeah, I think the the crazy thing is like ByteDance is the parent company, right? That they're a China-based company. TikTok USA is based in, in California, right? Everything is in California. Now the decision makers are all people, you know, who live here and have grown up here, et cetera. They still have a parent company in China. Of course, that parent company in China can still, you know, have directives, influence the board in whatever way to make decisions, you know, in a manner that they want. I'm sure there's also stuff, you know, baked into the app that benefits the CCP. But here's the thing. We live in a globalized economy now. How much do, do I, as an individual person in the United States, care if China is trying to influence what I'm thinking any more than I care that my government is trying to influence what I'm thinking. Because as far as I'm concerned, the government here in the United States has my interests in mind just as much as China does based on how they've governed lately. <laughs> sure. And I think that's why like a lot of Gen Z and millennial kids are like, well, what are they doing for me? Who cares if China's, you know, influencing my political views at all? You know, that that's interesting. I, I didn't think about the propagandize part of it. Uh, just the idea that I'm being like that. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I just, I no, it's just uh, the, the idea that China would somehow propagandize me in such a way that I'm skeptical of the structures of America is it's comical um especially it's free was. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy because every single poll every single thing that we see out in our society has shown that public trust in basically 
all institutions has completely eroded to the point where there is no trust. Like this idea that the that the, the CCP via TikTok dances and awesome spaghetti recipes are going to get <laughs> us to think less of the government, less of financial institutions, less of the church, less of, you know, all of the traditional institutions that have governed our lives here in America. Like that's that's fucking insane to me. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing that's going to change that relationship would be people in the United States who are decision makers like our members of Congress deciding to do things that benefit the people more and using those systems to benefit the people. That's what builds trust. If you actually want to deliver public goods, help us have health care, increase our quality of life and use your power to do that instead of Let's give $886.3 billion to defense spending while people mm -hmm. are losing their health insurance during the pandemic. Like, it doesn't make sense. That's what's going to build trust. They don't want to do that, right? They're making a ton of money working for Lockheed Martin. What, we pay members of Congress like a $400,000, $200,000 salary? Lockheed Martin's going to line their pockets far more. They're going to get a lot of trade secrets, make a bunch more money off of stock. They work for them now. They don't work yeah. for us. They're, they pay them more. That's their boss. And so that has to change. Uh, they would rather just control the narrative, get rid of TikTok, tell us it's dangerous for other reasons, because it's a lot more easy to say, ah, well, the CNN has to respond to their advertisers. We have the same bosses. Let's let people get their news and information there. Same with, you know, places like Meta and Twitter. Yeah, I've become kind of wary of this stuff. And it's funny because I go back home. I spent like about two and a half weeks in New York. And, you know, it's always fun to hang out with my normie friends who aren't psychopaths like us and yeah. like pay so much attention <laughs> to politics and, and what's going on. And one of my buddies was like, of course they should ban TikTok. He's like, don't you, you know, they don't let their kids use TikTok the ways ours do. There's an hour limit. They censor the content they can look at, blah, 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 blah. They know this shit is poisonous. And so, of course, they want us to just, you know, <laughs> they want us to overdose on TikTok. And he's like, he's like, my kid's going to hate me. There ain't no TikTok in my house. I'm not, no social, no none of that. They Until they move out of my crib. He was just so, like, anti-social. But it was interesting to hear, like, somebody who's not following this as obsessively as we do. Um, and just their passing um, sort of thoughts about this thing. Uh, and, you know, I, I think it's pretty easy to propagandize the American population against an other and justify this TikTok ban. Yeah, yeah, it's super easy. I think it's it's interesting, right? Because we think, all right, who are the actors? Who are the decision makers? But for most people, it's like, what is TikTok for? Silly dance app that, you know, my kid spends hours on and doesn't do their homework. Yeah. And there's all these weird trends. And now my kid's saying stuff that I don't understand. And it's just the viral TikTok audios. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. But that's not even the argument the members of Congress are making. If they were like, you know what? Our kids need to go outside more. And we're going to invest in public <laughs> education, public parks, actually. And we're going we're gonna to change our country for the better. That's not what they're saying. <laughs> they're saying, ah, China has control of our kids' brains. And so, yeah, maybe it would have been more compelling if they were just like, ah, we think this app is bad. Because... Eh, Instagram's functionality and, and Facebook has similar impacts on people, uh, especially now with Instagram Reels, which is just basically another TikTok. What I wonder is if the Restrict Act passes, which I hope to God it doesn't, because as we've talked about, it's much bigger than TikTok. And mm -hmm. sure, there's going to be some, some kinds of implications that even if you hate TikTok, this bill is going to give power to the Secretary of Commerce to just have full reign over censoring the internet for the American people, which is a problem. But I wonder like if they ban TikTok, there are so many ways we could access servers through like VPNs, right? The internet's a sketchy place. There are a lot of people who can hack into <laughs> stuff. Will there be places like during prohibition, we'll call it like the restriction era where people just go in and you can just be on TikTok in some like secret room and there's a password to get in i mean i i would hope not honestly <laughs> um because i i gotta say like as as online as i am as a person um i don't think social media is making us better i i, I truly don't i had this conversation with somebody the other day i just saw like i just saw like a really self-indulgent um 
maternity pic picture that was posted on Instagram. And I was just like, instead of like mailing this to your aunt and your uncles and your grandma and, you know, sharing this stuff with the people who love you and who are going to be in your kid's life and, you know, to track this beautiful moment, like your instinct was to basically wear a, a fucking Halloween costume, hire a professional photographer and post this shit on Instagram to a bunch of people who don't even really give a fuck about you like that. Like, it just, I don't know why, it just it just really made me feel dispirited, right? And, and I do think a lot of this social media stuff is taking us away from community. It's taking us away from connection um, on a human, spiritual level. And so part of me is like, one less social media. I don't really see the fucking harm in this, right? Maybe we will get back to having kids play in fucking parks and throw a football around and 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 fall off of bikes like like I did. I don't know, but am I being a get off my lawn person here, Jess? No, I think it's fair. I share the disdain you just said. I see stuff on Instagram where I'm like, Jesus Christ, like we're, we're, we need to live our lives. You, you know how? Remember when Donald Trump? Um, he was talking about uh, Mexico, and he, he and this is fucked up, but he was like, they're not sending us at their best. <laughs> like, I, I don't think, they, I have that attitude about social. Like, it's not making us into the best versions of ourselves, right? And so, yeah, so go ahead. Instagram is always just, I'm just like, yo, yeah. we're turning people weird. We're making people weird, dude. Yeah, yeah, I, especially after like meeting some of these influencers in real life and seeing how they're completely different than how they portray themselves online. But I will say, TikTok has been unique in that like what flies on TikTok is having a good personality and being real. Like it's super obvious to me, even if I don't know the person personally and I've never met them before and it's a stranger, I can tell when they're like putting up a front because it's hard to hide that in a video. Uh, especially when you're talking, not doing a lip sync, but Instagram's photos, Twitter's messages, TikTok, you can't hide like that. It's a more real in that sense. I think, dude, just anecdotally, uh, I, somebody showed me the TikTok of an Orthodox Jewish woman and she was explaining why she had two beds in her crib in her master bedroom with her and her husband. And, um, as she, when she's going through her cycle, they can't sleep in the same bed. She was like, she literally was breaking it down point for point. Like you got to go see a dude when it's over to sort of cleanse you, not in like a sort of like dirt type of way, but like, I guess a spiritual cleanse or whatever. And I was like, yo, this is, a, this is some raw shit to uh, be sharing online. But she was like being really candid about her life as an Orthodox Jewish person who's married to somebody. Yeah, I've learned so much about just like different kinds of people and how they live on TikTok. And some of that can be toxic when you're putting so much attention oh my God. on like a person. Like imagine someone like that goes viral, which has happened before. Like I remember the Mormon college when they talked about, you know, soaking, which is their way around. No Dude. premarital. Oh my God. And everyone was like, this is crazy. What is this? <laughs> imagine these poor Mormon kids that are like, oh no, we're the center of attention. Oh my God. Uh, everybody stop what you're doing right now. Go Google Mormon <laughs> soaking right now so that you can learn about this phenomenon that goes on um, in Mormon circles on college campuses, which just, just as an aside, um, I went to Salt Lake City for NBA All-Star Game last month. Um, my first time ever in Salt Lake, my first time ever in Utah, my first time ever in Mormon country. I don't like I don't have a negative or positive opinion of Mormons because I don't know them. Right. Like I don't know what they're actually like. Right. And when I think about, you know, hyper religiosity, I think about my own life where, you know, in seventh grade or eighth grade sex ed in um Catholic school, the pastor of my church gave us sex ed. And I distinctly remember him saying jacking off was a sin. I went home and jacked off that afternoon. Like it, it was like, there was no, this idea that as young people that you would actually 
listen to what the clergy had to say about your own lives that that never at all resonated but i got to talking to um these three uh mormon folks uh and they were no longer like you know practicing and all of that but they're they're of the culture and they would tell they explained to me what soaking was and it was like no there's people at byu doing this right now there's people doing it at the university of utah right now i'm like there's just no way that a 19 year old kid actually thinks this is a viable path to heaven like but you know it happens and and they That's let the people thing. know on TikTok. <laughs> and on TikTok, I saw someone exactly what you said about the pastor. Someone was like, I don't believe that I can have a relationship with God. And there's like some kind of middleman, some kind of secretary of God that's supposed <laughs> to know more about what I should do here than me. And it's like that real stuff is all over TikTok. On Instagram, you know what I see? It's the motivational speech videos. Like I never see someone like getting real <laughs> on Instagram reels. They're like, here's some grind Dude. set motivational speech. Oh my God. Or Picture it's like these fucking school. hucksters in, in, in my, you know, sort of community and cohort about buy black, black owned business. Oh, if you, if you just get some Bitcoin, you, you know, black people just get some Bitcoin. We would be out of the struggles and it's all of this, this, this ridiculousness. And, you know, like I said about TikTok, it feels like the people like, so in my profession, um, sports media, a lot of the conversation happens on Twitter and to a man, when I talk to my, um, colleagues and peers in my industry, everybody is so fucking miserable about Twitter. They're just like, it's the most miserable place. Like back in 2009, like we all were deriving pleasure from the experience on be, of being on Twitter. That is just basically not the case anymore. It's so toxic, toxic, excuse me. Of course, Instagram, all of these studies have come out about how this shit makes little girls feel and like people feel horrible about themselves, low self-esteem, mental health issues. Like it's making people, it's not only making us into worse versions of ourselves, it's also making us feel bad. TikTok seems to be the only shit, like everybody who I know who's active on on TikTok is thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying the um, experience of it. Yeah, a thousand percent, a thousand percent. And I don't know if that's just because like the algorithm's better at giving you what you want. So you get that dopamine hit in your brain, but ridiculous to hear the members of Congress in the hearing about banning it. Like, does your app, you know, show more content if the pupils dilate when it's on the screen? Uh, and it's just like so weird how they're asking questions like that. Like they asked the most ridiculous stuff. They were like, does the app access your home Wi-Fi network? Yeah, I heard oh, about like, that. They're like, only if the Wi-Fi is on. Like the stuff that they're asking is ridiculous. But I, dude, I genuinely enjoy it. These dudes are stuff. 75 years old. Just like. Yes. Like. Remember when they were like, do you commit to banning Finsta? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Isn't the service that we offer? <laughs> like, oh my God! Yeah, yeah. It's 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 quite comical. Um, how these yeah. how these folks have have comported themselves. And yeah, if like I said, um, I've noticed the anti-China rhetoric revving up. Uh, one, you know, they 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 can't they just can't stand the idea that there's another you know swinging dick on the global stage who <laughs> can wield influence like sorry us like you're no longer the big dog like other there's another global power who can wield influence and wield influences in places like bro they're brokering fucking diplomacy between iran and saudi arabia like this shit was unheard of you know and the us has to think to themselves how come we couldn't do that shit do you know what I mean? Um, so much of their global strategy has been about, hey Saudi, you need to buy these weapons because you're beefing with Iran. You know, <laughs> you need to get these these missiles because you're beefing with Iran. You know, these people that Iran's only getting bigger. You need to blah blah blah. Like this strategy has been so stupid. And China goes in there one fell swoop, and they're just like, nah, guys, here's why we should all work together. And they gotta be super nervous. Um 
about that, man. Like, like, and, and, and I understand that. But, like, uh, am I supposed to really sit here and be like, oh, I'm so scared of China and what they might do? It, it's, it's absurd to me. It's absolutely absurd. Yeah, I think it couldn't be more true. I'm, I'm not afraid about the rising power of China because when I think about the global stage, I don't think, oh, how can we secure the most capital? Because for me, it doesn't matter that figure at the end of the year what the United States GDP is, because oftentimes GDP and the dollar value of the goods and services we produce isn't actually representative of how much people value it, how much happiness it brings us. It's just a figure. Mm. That means oh, a lot of money went to these corporations and their shareholders and, and they made a ton of money because that's how our monetary system works. And we put everyone onto the dollar without really thinking, oh, like where are resources flowing? How can we produce a better quality of life for people? That was never a consideration. And so China, when you think about the friends they've made on the international stage, especially their work in Africa, there have always been, you know, some imperial uh, tendencies of China's involvement in Africa. But unlike the United States, there's also been some mutual benefit produced where they're like, all right, we're going to build this railroad. We're going to do trade. We're going to send a bunch of our workers in to actually make something. It's not like the United States where we're like, guess what, Latin American country? Extraction. These big That's guns. it. You're going to use dollars now. That's it. Yeah. We're just going to extract, extract, extract. Um, and the last thing that I'll say about this China thing, and I, I think it bears reminding people, um, and we had Danny Bessner up, up here because he, you know, he's a, he's a historian and a scholar on, um, U S foreign policy. And he's like, look, you know, you mentioned we spend in close to a trillion dollars a year um on military at a certain point these folks understand that even they have to justify their existence right the cold war ended so we no longer have big spooky soviet union uh that we need to you know pour all these resources into defending ourselves against that ends they're just like all right what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like humanitarian military operations in places like kosovo and rwanda and blah 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 blah, blah. and it's like ah, that just didn't that didn't get you know the dicks hard enough it's just like ah this is this doesn't satisfy the need boom you know, we do that throughout the whole 90s and boom, 9-11 happens. And it's like, Eureka, we have a new reason for being. It's terrorism. It's the war on terror. It's all these scary, you know, brown people in pickup trucks. And, you know, they're going to come kill your kids and behead them in Nebraska. And even though that's ridiculous and these guys, you know, you can't drive a pickup truck across the ocean, but whatever. Um, and, you know, these are all of the things that they that they tried to use to genofer in I want people to really think about this. When's the last time you heard somebody mention terrorism or ISIS or any of that shit? Like, it's done. Like, we don't care about that shit no more. They know that that doesn't animate um, the the American pers uh, imagination anymore. Nobody's thinking about terrorism or a war on terror that we're fighting. We, <laughs> The government that we propped up in Afghanistan <laughs> dissolved in 72 hours. <laughs> By the Taliban, we spent trillions, hundreds of billions, all of this stuff propping up that government. It was done in less than three days um, by the freaking ta the Taliban. OK, um, and so these cats, they know like they got to move the target like but they have to move our attention and our hate and this enemy shit somewhere. And they've decided that China will be their reason for being. And that's why you're seeing all of this. We need a new enemy. We need a new boogeyman. Um, terrorism is, that shit is just done. Like we might as well, they might as well start letting us keep our shoes on at TSA at this point, just cause we're done with terrorism. It's over, you know, and, and China's the new thing. It's so true. That, and that's so entrenched in American culture, the good guy, bad guy thing. I was walking to school, or I don't know why I said school. I was in graduate school, so I was old. It was recent. And uh, <laughs> I'm walking and uh, walking to college, and I pass by this playground, and there's kids playing, screaming, laughing, whatever. And I hear this kid go, hey, you're the bad guy now. You be the bad guy now, all right? Okay? Waiting for confirmation, like, we need a bad guy. We always need a bad guy. And we need good guys. 
And that's how the stories go in the United States. And this confirmation of like, will you be the bad guy? Huh? All right. It's like, that's American foreign policy. And because it's so entrenched in our culture, just as people, it's easy for those who don't pay a lot of attention in politics to be like, okay, yep, this is the narrative that I, I'm used to. This makes sense. This, there's always something like this going on. But among the people who really pay attention to politics, like too much, the people that are really pro-imperialism and pro-war and pro-defense spending, I haven't met one person who is aware of what's going on politically in the world, who is pro-war and defense spending without them being explicitly like, yes, I think the United States should have global dominance and exert power at the expense of other people abroad. And I'm good with that because someone in my family makes money off of that. I work for a bank that makes money off of that. Like there's literally no one that defends the United States foreign policy that is aware of the history and what's going on politically that isn't a crazy person who is just down for imperialism and colonization. Like everyone else who's aware is like, oh yeah, this is messed up. Like we're, we're actually the bad guys. I don't care if it's my government. I'm a person independent of that. So I think that's scary that they've just made it a part of our culture that there's always, there's always a bad guy. This is your new bad guy. You're welcome. The TV's on, watch Hulu, watch Netflix. Maybe don't scroll TikTok, maybe scroll Instagram. Yeah, um, I can say I'm really heartened, and I and I said this on our um, our Iraq 20 year uh, episode that we did last week. Uh, I just I feel heartened by the fact that Americans are more war wary than ever before, and nobody's gonna buy this idea that we should be you know invading or warring or sending people to go kill you know a bunch of people that live in huts. Like everybody's just kind of decided that this shit is stupid which is one of the few things in culture that I'm heartened by. Um, we've had you up here long enough. Please, Jess, tell the people where they can find you and your incredible work. Um, you know, plug the TikTok, all of that. TikTok for now, you can find me on. <laughs> uh, Ka Burbank, K Burbank, on the Twitter. Just search Jessica Burbank, Substack, Ka Burbank, YouTube now. It's all Jessica Burbank, Ka Burbank. I love it. Um, that's our show for today. Make sure you become a Patreon at patreon.com backslash count the dings. Um, make sure you're checking out all of our other offerings. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.